Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sharif Al-Gamal and today we are going to continue our videos about uh, reinforced concrete design according to the BS code. In today's video, we will be talking about the analysis of reinforced concrete sections under flexural loading. If we have a simply supported beam, as we can see, and if we apply some load on this beam, so the beam will deflect. This will result in tensile forces at the bottom layer of the beam and compressive forces at the upper layers of the beam. So if we take a section of this beam, we'll find that the stress distribution at the initial uh, loading stages will be uh, triangle, as we can see. Under the, under the neutral axis, we have compressive uh, stresses above the neutral axis, we have tensile stresses and the strains. So if we draw this in 2D, this is showing the cross section and the reinforcement. This dot line is the neutral axis. So the strain distribution will be always linear. Uh, at the top, we have epsilon C, with the compressive strains in the concrete. At the bottom layer, we have epsilon T, which is the tensile strains in the concrete. And the distance from the compression outer surface of the cross section to the neutral axis, we call it X. So the strain will be always linear. And before cracking, the loads are very small. So also the stress will be linear. So the strain is linear and also the stress will be linear. And we have compressive strain at the above the neutral axis and tensile strains in the concrete under the neutral axis. By increasing loads, and as concrete is weak in tension, so the concrete under the neutral axis will crack and only the forces will be carried, the compression forces will be carried by the concrete above the neutral axis. So under the neutral axis, no concrete is there anymore and all the tensile forces will be carried by the reinforcing steel bars. So why this one is rectangle? This is coming from the stress strain relationship. And as you can see here, at the initial levels of loading, the stress and the strain is almost linear. So this uh, triangle stress block is coming from this triangle here because uh, it is almost linear between the stress and the strain at lower load levels. So in 2D, we will have this stress and will be called triangle stress block. But at the ultimate, the stress strain become non-linear and we can see here the maximum is 0.45 FCU coming from 0.67 FCU divided by gamma M which is 1.5 in uh, the bridge standard code. Uh, if you want to learn more about the stress strain uh, relation of steel and concrete we can find in uh, a previous video. So for at ultimate the stress will be called rectangular parabolic. It will be similar to the stress strain curve. And instead of having a triangle load here, this will be called rectangular uh, parabolic. And in 2D, it will be this shape. The height of this stress is still X. And to increase this one and enlarge it, we can see here the maximum value equals 0.45 FCU which is the maximum value here, the same height here equal to the same height here. So 0.45 FCU and the height or the length as the other dimension of the rectangular or the rectangular parabolic is the same value, which is X, the distance from the outer compression surface of the concrete to the center uh, line or the uh, neutral axis of the reinforced concrete section. The problem of this rectangular parabolic is that it is difficult to calculate this load, the resultant load here, or to find the centroid of this load. So it is difficult to use this rectangular parabolic in the analysis and design of reinforced concrete sections. Therefore, design codes, instead of using this rectangular parabolic, they most of the codes or all design codes, they changed this one from rectangular parabolic to something called equivalent rectangular. Equivalent rectangular, we can see here, now it is a rectangle, not parabolic anymore. And the height of this uh, equivalent rectangular now is 0.9x. It is less than the distance from the outer 
concrete uh, surface to the neutral axis. Let's enlarge this one and see how it look. Here, the stress equals 0.45 FCU, which is the maximum uh, stress according to the uh, stress strain relationship. This value, of course, differs from one code to another code. So it depends on the code that you are using. According to the BS code, this will be the maximum value. And again, the height here, according to the BS, is S equals 0.9x. And again, it differs from one code to another. But the same concept of using equivalent rectangular, it is in all design codes. The, the difference will be on the calculating of the value of S here and calculating the value of maximum stress, but it is still the same. By using this equivalent rectangle, it will be easy to find the compression force and to be able to find the uh, capacity of the cross section. Let's conclude this. So uh, just after cracking, the stress will be triangle, as you can see, and the forces, the tensile forces will be carried by the tension steel. At the ultimate, we have this rectangle parabolic, and to make it easier for engineers to design, they changed this one from rectangular parabolic to equivalent rectangular with a height equals 0.9x and a maximum value equals 0.45 FCU. Let's now learn how to calculate the value of the compression force and the uh, capacity of the section or resisting moment capacity of the section. So we have here a compression force, we'll call it F sub CC. And the tension force in the steel reinforcement, we'll call it FST. And the distance of the lever arm will be called Z. The maximum stress, as we explained, equals 0.45 FCU. And the height here, S equals 2.9X. The cross-section dimensions will be equal to B. The width and the effective depth from the compression surface to the center line of the tension steel will be called D, which is the effective depth. Now. Let's make equilibrium between the two forces. Submission of force in the horizontal direction should be zero. So submission of the forces here equal to zero. So you'll find that FCC equals to the FST. The compression equals to the tension. Let's get the moment. The moment from this couple equals what? Equals if you take a moment at the, uh, the position of FCC. So it will be FCT times Z or if you take it down here, so it will be FCC times Z. So the moment equals the compression force multiplied by the lever arm. And meanwhile, it equals to the compression, the tension force multiplied by the lever arm because FCC equals to the FST. So how much is the FCC and how much is the FST? Let's get them. But before doing that, how much is this lever arm? This lever arm equals to the total depth, effective depth, from the compression to the center line of the tension steel minus this distance here, which is the S over two. This load or this force is exactly at the middle of the uh, S. So the distance above the force equals S over two. Then the lever arm equals D minus S over two. Let's now calculate the uh, FCC. The FCC equals to uh, a force always equal to a stress multiplied by area. So the stress here equals 0.45 FCU. And the area will be the area of the concrete. The area of the concrete equals S multiplied by B. So the compression force coming from this stress block here equals to the stress, maximum stress, 0.45 FCU, multiplied by the area of the concrete under compression, which is S multiplied by B. Uh, meanwhile, the force in the tension steel, again, the force equals stress in the steel multiplied by the area of the steel. The maximum stress in the steel, assuming that it will yield and will be a tension failure, so it will be the maximum 0.95 F yield, which is the F yield divided by gamma M 1.05, according to the BS code. So it is 0.95 F yield multiplied by the area of the steel reinforcement. So we can find the compression force and also we can find the tension force. The last thing to find is to get the uh, capacity, the resisting moment of the section. So the moment will be coming from this couple. So the moment equals FCC times Z and also FST times Z by substituting the FCC and FST. So the moment coming from the compression side equals FCC, which will be this 
term here 0.45 FCU times S times B multiplied by the lever arm, which is D minus S over two. And if we get it from the tension side, take a moment at the position of FCC. So it will be FST multiplied by D minus S over two. The FST equals 0.95 FE yield AST multiplied by the lever arm, which is D minus S over two. In the coming video, we will be talking about the flexural modes of failure uh, of reinforced concrete section. Uh, thank you for watching this video. If you like the video, please click on like, subscribe, and share with others. Thank you, and looking forward to see you in a coming video, and goodbye.